Hey guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Rules Breakdown. And this time I'm going to be having a look at this. Star Trek Adventure Gaming in the Final Frontier from Heritage Models in 1978. Now while I don't think anybody is going to be searching the internet or searching YouTube for how to play this game and how the rules work, especially as they're pretty easy, I think this video is mainly for us to have a look at how rules were designed in 1978 at the very dawn of our hobby seeing how things have evolved and changed, and whether there are any interesting ideas which got abandoned on the path to where we are now. Now, as usual, I'll be using a sample character, and on page four we've got various Star Trek personalities, and I'm going to be using Captain James T. Kirk, and when we come to the fighting segment, Kirk and Spock can have a good old fight. So first up, skills. Well, this game has no skills in it at all. Everything is based on an attribute. Because if we turn to page 7, we can see learning. During the course of a game, characters may confront various types of alien machinery or processes. To understand or learn something about a machine, an alien life form, or other unknown conditions, the player uses his or her character mentality. Then we've got psionics, which uses charisma, and we've got saving throws, which, dodging out of the way of things, is luck. But it's modified by dexterity if you're trying to jump out of the way of something. So we can see that the skill system basically uses an attribute. So if Kirk is trying to move something heavy, he's going to be rolling on his strength. If they are trying to balance on a greasy pole, then they're going to be using their dexterity. If they are trying to jump out of the way of falling rocks, then you're using their luck, but it'll be modified by their dexterity. And the way it works with modification from dexterity, or modification from any attribute, is any points you have over 12 add to the uh, skill. Any under 9 take away from that. So if you've got a high dexterity, Kirk has 14, which is 2 points over 12. So, if he's using his dexterity to jump out of something along with his luck, he's actually got 17, so he's very likely to succeed. Um, Spock has uh, 17, so that's 5 points over. So he'll be adding 5 to his luck for the same thing. So he'll be rolling 17 as well. So, in this occasion, we will clear that, and we will roll 3d6. And we get an 11 which is way under the 17 they need for leaping out of the way or something. Now, you can get modifications to this as well. So, Kirk, for example, in hand-to-hand, -hand, will be getting a plus 5 when he's fighting. Um, we've got things like tricorders. So, when a character is using a tricorder to analyse an alien device, life form, or other process, subtract 5 from the dice roll, or add it to the attribute as we've been doing with everything else. So Spock trying to analyse a alien console to work out how it works, and he whips out his tricorder. He's got his mentality of 16, adding 5, 21. There's no way he can fail. So initiative. Well, in this game, there's two versions of initiative. There's a basic system and there's an advanced system. The basic system is covered here on page 8. Everybody declares actions, and then it goes in dexterity ra ranking from high to low. So Kirk here has a dexterity of 14, Spock has 17. So Spock goes first in the basic system. However, the more advanced system involves rolling a d6 and modifying it by the dexterity. Fortunately, the bonuses are calculated out here. So Kirk has a plus 2, Spock has a plus 5 from his dexterity of 17. But also, you can modify it by different equipment. The advanced system is detailed here on page 30. And the equipment has things. So in hand-to-hand -hand combat, if you're using a dagger, then you are changing it by minus one. You are slowed down from a simple punch. If you're using a lurper, it's minus four. Continuing through to ranged weapons, they have their initiation modifiers as well. So a photon grenade launch is minus four. And armor also modifies it. So if you are carrying a shield, you are slowed down. If you're wearing various types of armor, you're slowed down. Although some things don't affect it. Apparently a Klingon armor vest doesn't affect their initiative at all. So in this, 
We're just going to use the standard dice roll version. They're not using any particular weapons, um, even though, let's say it's the fight on Vulcan. They're using Lurpers. So it's going to be a minus four to their dice roll. So, Kirk and Spock. Kirk gets a plus two, minus four, so he's getting minus two to his dice roll. So he throws, he gets a six, so he's going to go in four. Spock has plus five, he's using Lurper, so it's going to be plus one. So he throws, he gets a six as well, so he's going in seven. So Spock's going to go first in this sample combat, because he has rolled higher, plus and minus all the modifiers. And combat. Well, basically there is also a basic and advanced version of combat, but also hand-to-hand -hand combat and range combats handled differently. So there's actually going to be four different things we're going to be covering here, but they're all pretty similar, so it's not going to take us long. So, first of all, hand-to-hand -hand basic. Hand-to-hand -hand basic is you're rolling 1d6 for the attacker, modified by strength and dexterity. And of course, taking in their hand-to-hand -hand training, which fortunately is all figured out on here. So, Kirk has plus one from his strength, plus one, for, uh, plus two from his dexterity. He's got class two hand-to-hand, -hand, so he's got plus five for his hand-to-hand. -hand. Spock, if he's defending, or if he's attacking, sorry, gets plus five from his strength, plus five from his dexterity. He's got class 4 hand-to-hand, -hand, so he's got plus 14 in his hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, in this sample combat, Spock was going first. So he's going to be rolling his dice, plus 14. Gets a 6, he's got 20. There's no way Kirk's going to beat that. But going back, Kirk is going to be rolling his luck, plus his hand-to-hand. -hand. So he's rolling 1d6, plus 3 points from his luck plus two points from his hand-to-hand, -hand. so he's rolling plus five. So, he rolls a four, plus five to nine. Now, in the basic system, that 11 points converts straight to damage, and we'll continue dealing with that in the damage section. But in the more advanced version, if we go back to weapons, we can see that weapons have defense modifiers, so in the Kirk and Spock fight, Kirk would be adding a defense modder. He's using a Lurper, so he gets a bonus one, which only takes him to 10. But it doesn't matter because any hit counts here. And the Lurper does four damage dice. So we're going to be rolling 4d6, throwing them. And instead of whatever damage we'd rolled, modified by Kirk using the Lurper, we've rolled 12 damage, and that's going to carry through as well. And ranged combat. Well, ranged combat for the basic version is a matter of rolling against a target number instead of modifying a dice roll. So everybody's rolling 1d6 for firing their weapon. We will say that Kirk has rolled a 4, and we're modifying or we're looking up his dexterity on this hit probability table on page 10. So Kirk has a dexterity of 14. To hit something at close range, uh, point blank range, he needs a 6. Close range, a 5. Medium range, a 4. Um, long range, a 3. Extreme range, a 2. So he's missed at long or extreme ranges, but everything else he's managed to hit. And there are also certain modifiers here, if the attacker is moving, if the defender's moving, uh, defender's partially hidden, darkness, attacker being fired at. And you've got lots of modifiers you can add there. Now the advanced system is dealt with on page 31. And basically these are just extended. So we have initiation modifiers, we have various stuff like rate of fire, rounds, uh, reload time, etc. But we've got more detailed hit tables um, over on page 34. So Kirk's uh, 15, pretty much the same modifiers, but there's a chance of missing with lower dexterities. 
at lower levels and higher ranges, and we've got far more modifiers. But it's basically the same system for ranged combat, it's just that it's extended in the advanced version. So on to damage. Well, in the fight between Kirk and Spock that we're doing, Spock had succeeded in hitting in the basic version and beating Kirk by 11 points, which converts directly to damage. In the advanced version, he'd succeeded in a hit and then rolled damage dice and done 12. If in ranged combat and Spock had succeeded, he'd have rolled damage dice as well. Now from here on in, I'm just going to handle the 11 points. It doesn't really make any difference. The differences are that in ranged combat, the defender now gets to roll their luck roll. So they get to roll a d6 plus their luck modifiers. So if we flick back to Kirk, his luck is 15. So he'll be rolling a d6 plus his luck and reducing the amount of damage done from a ranged attack by that. Other than that, if we turn to page 33, we can see that there's armor here. And let's say Kirk, as well as holding his lurper, he's got a uh, buckler on one arm, that's an armor rating of 4. So the 11 points of damage done in combat gets reduced by 4 points to 7. And so on to health. Well, your constitution is your hit points, basically. So Kirk has a constitution of 13, he's just taken 7 damage, so he's down to 6. However, there's added rankles to this. That, if you lose more than half your hit points in a single attack, then you're knocked out straight away. You've taken massive amounts of damage and you're down. Also, in ranged combat, certain weapons have a stun setting. And you record stun damage separately. And once you receive half your hit points in stun damage, you're stunned and you drop down. But apart from that, basically you've got your constitution, which acts as a certain amount of hit points and damage comes off that. And on to advancement. Well, this game has no advancement. <laughs> Basically, if you look at your character sheet at the start, that's what they're going to look like when they finish. You can gain equipment, you can lose equipment, but there's nothing else to it than that. They don't mention any way of improving your character. Now, obviously, there's a character creation system in the advanced version of the game, where you could create a completely different character and try that, but nobody's going to get better. But this actually kind of makes sense for Star Trek in the original series format, where it was episodic. And basically, everybody ended every episode exactly the same as they did at the start, because the episodes could be shown in any order whatsoever. So let's just call that a design choice, then a failure of the game. So that is Star Trek Adventure Gaming in the Final Frontier. It's a very basic game. Obviously from 1978, there wasn't much better around. We were still very much on the forefront of developing role-playing. I find it interesting that they've got rules in there which you can easily develop, you know, making charisma roles to speak to somebody in a role-playing format. But the rules themselves don't mention that. They just mention the mentality roles and allow you to draw your own conclusion as to making strength rolls or charisma rolls or whatever for other situations. I do quite like the modifiers. It'd be nice if there were more modifiers in the advanced game so characters weren't just good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, that they could pick up uh, different skills in different areas. You know, Spock having analysis skills or something like that. But it's an interesting game. I think they've wasted a lot of time on having all these different versions of the combat rules, which are basically the same, just tweaked slightly. They could have had them as optional rules, the way that Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition and many other games have done. But anyway, I think I've witted on for quite long enough, especially about a game which came out in 1978, which has been out of print for over 40 years. So thank you very much for watching, as always. But most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.